small practice from Thrasher who do architecture and uh, small interventions through art. Our inspiration comes from all kinds of places, good works of art, architecture, of course, good literature, good movies, good folks. So our inspiration, we look for, in for in inspiration everywhere. So back in 2005, when we were starting a practice of our own, we wanted to start a very meaningful one, one that questioned the conventional thoughts, why not? Why not this way? Question the traditions, maybe, and come up with an answer which is more suiting to our present ages. There were wonderful practices and wonderful works then to be learned from, but unfortunately, due to the lack of media coverage, we didn't have access to such people and such good works. So inevitably, we had to make those mistakes ourselves before we learned. It was during that time that we happened to um, go through a presentation, be at a presentation by a famous architect, uh, architect Sanjay Mohe, whom I believe is one of the living masters. He addressed 10 mistakes of his professional life. Now, someone as established as him coming out clean in front of all these people, it was a big eye-opener for us as a practice and as an individual. And we carried on a lot many lessons from that. So an opportunity like this, when Cochin Design Week approached us, we thought, why not give an attempt on that? So the small presentation, I would be talking about a couple of mistakes that which we did in our own works. And uh, we fancily just named it as Mia Copa. It's a Latin term for the same. Mistake as such is defined um, in the dictionary as words, as error, fault, misreckoning, fallacy, slip on. If one wants to question, retrospect their own works, these are all terms that you would honestly come across, whether you're a designer, an architect, a farmer, a CEO, whoever you are, you would honestly come across these terms. And to come out clean is a very difficult task. It's always wonderful to talk about your accolades, your achievements, your wonderful projects, and uh, show visuals of that. But then um, this is a humble presentation on the few errors that which we did, knowingly or unknowingly. And um, if there are lessons to be learned from that, well, it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity. This is one of the first projects that which we did. Um, it's the residence for Dr. Sijo and Dr. Tushara. It was back in 2005, and um, it was then that um, uh, pseudo-traditional architecture was being practiced profusely. Um, left, right, and center. Everywhere you could see uh, concrete slabs with um, uh, mango tiles stuck on it. And uh, that was kind of like a visual that was all over. This, if, if I may be allowed to call it, it could be a kind of an antithesis to all these thoughts that which we had in our minds. And uh, being novices at that time, we didn't know as into how exactly to achieve those kind of aesthetic values and how to bring those concepts um, uh, alive. So this was our um, a humble kind of uh, an attempt at that. And uh, being new to the field, we thought, you know, why not totally trust on the good masonry work, good plastering work, good painting, and maybe even good waterproofing. And we could protect these walls. So um, we conveniently eliminated the simple element of a coping, that which we all give for our buildings to protect the external walls. Now the function of it is pretty obvious that it protects the walls from um, you know, the streaks of fungus and dirt that collects over a period of time. It even uh, hides the dirt that comes in between the hairline cracks. But then um, we just wanted, we tried this hoping and believing that it would all work out. These are our shots of the residence um, taken into the initial life of it. And uh, you see very clean walls. But then unfortunately, that's not the situation now. They got, they, the owners, they have to maintain, they got to paint uh, so very often because of the lack of the scoping. It's in the same residence that we tried a lot of um, ideas that which we had um, as designers, and we didn't know where to stop. Um, we also attempted at giving uh, huge skylights, and uh, not just one, but two. And, um, 
Uh, we all learn about stack effect, how you have to give a vent just about, just below the slab so that the hot air escapes and um, uh, we have to keep one of the windows at the lower bottom open so that this, this kind of circulation of air is facilitated. And we did educate the clients on that and uh, they all agree to it. And, but then busy life, busy doctors, a lack of privacy, bugs, mosquitoes, they just don't keep the windows open at the lower bottom. So our plan A failed. The, this house is pretty hot during the summers. Even the air vent that we gave just below the, the topmost part of the glass doesn't function as well. Um, even though it is about um, 10 centimeters and full stretch of the skylight, it doesn't really flush out the hot air. So um, as architects, when you have plan A, it's always necessary to have plan B in case it doesn't work out. Now this slide was put in not to boast of the many accolades we have got for the projects, but then just as an eye opener, the fact that you know, award-winning materials are not necessarily um, flawless. They have their own mistakes. They are done by humans, conceived by us. And so you have to see it that way. The Selfless House is another project which is close to our hearts. This old couple came to us asking for a retirement home. They wanted a residence where they could freely move about, not worry about um, housekeeping, uh, could leave it messy. Um, they could use furniture which they have been owning for 50, 55 years or so. So we gave them a kind of uh, residence where we tried uh, lots of rustic finishes. And when you try new finishes, we make sure that the clients are comfortable with it. We sample it out and they gave us a big thumbs up and we went with exposed concrete uh, slabs, um, mud plastered um, uh, walls, cotta flooring. After they shifted in, we had, um, obviously they had a lot of guests um, having won a couple of awards, this too. Um, our friends had visited the house and with them, they, the client shared their worries about their belief that uh, the slab is going to cave in on them with a the lack of plaster, which somehow uh, someone convinced them that that is a structural member too, and without which the slab is going to cave in on them. Now, what do you t say to that? You know, as architects, um, I believe it would be more convenient if we could master the art of body language, reading body language, because um, when the clients, many times they say yes, they might be saying a no. and. Um, in our profession, it will go far away if we could master that art. These are a couple of visuals through the house. The regimented house, um, one that is more recent to us. Uh, this, this residence is located in uh, quite a big plot and uh, there's thoroughfare for the neighbors to move about. And the owners, when they build the house, they didn't want to tamper with that particular circulation. They didn't want to kind of intimidate them or stop them in any way. So that was um, kind of encouraged. So uh, we arrived upon a language where we have screens um, giving privacy to the living, dining, and the kitchen area, which comes towards that side. And um, because by, um, by the nature of these neighbors, they have the habit of just prying in to the window without caring about your privacy. So uh, this was uh, our attempt at that. And the clients, they were very particular in having a very huge central courtyard with lush greenery. And um, we gave them that, literally. These are shots taken maybe one or two months into their housewarming. And, uh, but then um, now it's been almost two years. And you can imagine these, these plants have grown uh, to uh, two floor size. They actually hit the skylight above. So it's a practical jungle with squirrels, creepy crawlies, butterflies, birds, and all coming in. So it's a functioning forest. Now, when we started designing our own residence, we were sitting through these minor, uh, minor things, and then uh, we thought to ourselves, Lijo and myself, that you know, if at all we were to live in a house with such a huge courtyard, and we are, we are in the house alone, and I want to go get a, a drink of water from the kitchen, just cross this forest, and then. Would that be a scary thought? As a designer, many times we get stuck with the visuals of what we want to achieve. And then we don't go further in exploring or questioning the emotions or various factors behind it all. We never thought as into the fear factor that might be associated with something as beautiful a visual as this. 
All the rooms inevitably are connected with this courtyard, so you cannot at any point of time cut it off other than closing the windows and pulling, uh, drawing the curtains. So these are, we have to question as architects and designers several emotional factors also of the client and not just see it as an, um, um, an outcome of your visual alone. This is one of the walks through the courtyard. In other residents, uh, the breathing wall, this sits on a 4.7 cents uh, of land and uh, the requirements, though the site was small, the requirement was not small. Um, it, there was a huge list and um, we, uh, we told the clients that you have to see the circulation in a kind of an unconventional manner or else it would not be possible to achieve all of that. And the clients were game game for it and then um, um, the circulation was such that the central atrium uh, which had a functioning um, courtyard was also the access core to all the various floors in which you have the bedrooms so uh, the staircase um, it is located right in the middle of it and um, this courtyard this atrium which goes up to three floors high is actually uh, the central area it's the lungs of the of the house it, it brings in the breeze and the light to all the other rooms because the other two sites are almost abutting the plot boundary and you cannot have uh, openings, huge openings towards that side. So the source of light and ventilation is actually this courtyard. So we had to bring in light and um, breeze, which meant that we had to perforate the two external walls and the screen invariably had a lot of perforations. Now when perforations, it comes to perforations, they also bring in uh, slight drizzles with the strong um, rains that we have these days. It not, it's almost 45 degrees and more. And um, these staircases were bound to get wet. And we as designers had seen it beforehand and had discussed this factor with the client and uh, they were ready to go for a rough finish for the steps. Um, and uh, we proceeded. But then, as you can imagine, uh, having dealt with um, clients from this part of the world, they want polished teak and polished um, granite at the end of the uh, the project. They don't uh, remember the many promises that uh, they have kept. And then um, ultimately the tug of war was won by the client. Obviously you can see the images. They went with uh, polished teak. And uh, these staircases do get wet unfortunately and the rain as predicted. And you can imagine it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's not a very comfortable situation that you have to go walk through wet steps. The, the lesson learned here is or uh, the factor is that you question, you put up a fight with a client for something that you totally believe in. And at times, the clients do win the whole thing, but then uh, it's always important that, um, it's always important that you stick by your beliefs. And um, with that, um, I come to the small um, thought that which we have constantly when we talk, talk about our own projects, that experiments are part of, um, part of our practice and experiments are not without any failures. Sometimes they do succeed, sometimes they do fail. But then it's that thought that um, that actually paves way for the next project, next amazing thought maybe, which uh, drives us. So thank you.